So a couple days ago, the Carolina Panthers shocked a lot of people when they went out and they gave up three draft picks for the Jets' former third overall pick, Sam Darnold, the quarterback from USC. So what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? We are going to be doing our Carolina Panthers reveal today. And actually, I was just talking to you guys for the last 10 minutes, but my uh, OBS software that I record Madden on was corrupted. So I actually went through the draft um, and also free agency. But free agency, I signed pretty much everybody major that the Panthers got. David Moore, Denzel Perriman, and Hassan Reddick. Also put the franchise tag on Taylor Madden. And then in the draft, so, uh, Panay Sewell was off the board, Jamar Chase, well, I wasn't really going to go after Jamar Chase, but I was looking mainly at three guys at pick uh, eight, and that was Kyle Pitts, Panay Sewell, and Patrick Sertan, because this team could use a corner, and I ended up going with Pitts over Sertan as Sewell was off the board, also Rashawn Slater was off the board as well. So, this was my draft, Kyle Pitts, Deontay Brown, Aaron Robinson, Ifetu Melifanu, Benjamin Sejuste, and then Brady Breeze. So, yeah, these were my picks, Kyle Pitts, I mean, like... Yeah, like, it's a stud, like, offense now. We're giving Sam Darnold, DJ Moore. Uh, we're giving him Robbie Anderson, his former teammate. We're also giving him Kyle Pitts and Christian McCaffrey. That is really good. So, uh, Deontay Brown is a hidden development guy, and, like, the left side of the O-line is going to be pretty bad this year. Pretty bad. But, uh, yeah, like, what do you guys think of this trade? Let me know down below. Do you think the Panthers could actually go into the playoffs next year with Sam Donald as their quarterback. So uh, we are going to probably play like Chin at free safety um, and then Trey Boston at, uh, or Chin at strong safety and then Boston at free safety. Like the secondary isn't great. That's something I really wanted to go for in this draft. But like you took Gross Matos, uh, Matos, we got uh, Derek Brown, their top 10 pick from 2020. Brian Burns, their first round pick from 2019. The D-line is solid. And then we have Kiwan Short, or uh, Kiwan Short, uh, 32, he's getting up there in age. As our D-tackle too, it's not bad. We have Reddick and Shaq Thompson outside, Denzel Perriman inside. The front seven is pretty good. Like, we have Jeremy Trader, who was a stud rookie last year for the Panthers. But it's really the corners. Like, it's a little bit rough. It's a little bit rough. Wow, Brady Breeze is actually hidden development. Okay. Um, and then, like, on the offense, it's pr it's kind of set besides the left side of the O-line. So, really, we can use a left tackle, left guard, a middle linebacker, and probably another good corner. Because, like, Dante Jackson really can't do this all on his own. Because it's not great. Like, Aaron Robinson, we'll see what he can do. Trey or Troy Pride Jr., we'll see what he can do uh, as he's still fairly young. But that is the team. And I can't believe I just, my thing got corrupted and I was even talking to you guys the last 10 minutes. I was literally talking to myself. <laughs> uh, that's just the funny parts of being a YouTuber. But yeah, I ended up with a better draft class this time because, like, um, I'm on Xbox, so I can't use Bengals. And then, like, uh, I was always using the always using the TFG one, which was the number one downloaded one on the Xbox Madden Share. So I ended up downloading a new one, and like this time, I think like Fields even went second. And sometimes like Lance and Jones would fall to the second round. I think Lance actually fell to the second round on this one, but Matt Jones went like top ten, which is pretty cool. So let's go here to the regular, or we're here at the start of the regular season, and let's take a look at the depth chart. So you guys were saying that the playbook matters more than the schemes. So I really won't take too much of a look here at the scheme. We'll just go to multiple zone run. 4-3 under. I like I'm not really sure. I, I'm gonna try this playbook under Joe Brady and Matt Roll. Like this is gonna be really good for Sam Darnold. And yes, I am starting Sam Darnold because they just gave up three picks for him. Now, you might say Teddy Bridgewater is better, but like we're rolling with Darnold as our franchise guy. Title thumbnail we got you. So yeah, we got Pitts, Modin, Brown, Paredes, and the left side of the O-line, not great. But yeah, Pitts is gonna be a stud for us. I didn't get him in two rebuilds because we did get him in the Bengals rebuild. We got uh DJ Moore as our wide receiver two, Robbie Anderson, wide receiver one. We will yeah, we can roll with that. And then we have David Moore, wide receiver three. We have McCaffrey and Darnold over to the defensive side of the ball. We got Jeremy Chin. I want Trey Boss. I'll just move Trey Boss into the free safety position. I'm at strong safety. I don't know why I keep saying free safety, but yeah, we are going to have Trey Boston as our, our star, starting strong safety. We have a sound medic, their new signing, Temple Main. Let's go. Um, from Arizona, really like that pickup for them. Shaq Thompson and Denzel Perriman as our linebackers. We have Dante Jackson, Troy Pride Jr., Aaron Robinson, and Gross Matos, Brown, Short, and Burns as our D line. Specialists, we have uh, Joey Sly and is that Mike Pallardy? Polarity, Polarity, yeah, that's the way to say it. And then specialist, we will have Aaron Robinson as our slot corner, and I'm going to put DJ Moore as our slot receiver. So I'm going to roll with the Matt Rule um, playbooks for now. I will see you guys at the end of the year, and let's see what Sam Darnold can do in his first year in Carolina. 
All right, so we ended the season with a 7-9 and nine record, pretty much where you would expect possibly the Panthers to finish in real life next year because it's going to be the Bucks most likely as the division winner, but then it's going to be kind of up for grabs who's going to be in second. I mean, obviously, in this game, the Falcons end up going 12-4 and four in the States without Drew Brees, 111-5, but still, like, I think the Buccaneers will win the division and then the Panthers, Saints, and Falcons all have a solid shot at getting that two seed or that or coming in second in the NFC South. So we'll take a look at how Sam Darnold did. Ooh, 30th in passing yards. Okay. 31 touchdowns, 15 interceptions, 3,500 yards for Darnold. Rushing-wise, Christian McCaffrey, 238, 1,200, and five touchdowns. Trenton Cannon also got six touchdowns. Receiving-wise, DJ Moore, over 1,000 yards, 60 for 1,284 and 11 touchdowns. He was a stud. Robbie Anderson, also Temple made, and shout-out to Matt Roll, also Temple made. Uh, 65, 716, and six touchdowns. Kyle Pitts, 64 for 644 and seven touchdowns. Like I said, oh, I'm not in, come on, you're doing that to me. Actually, I think I locked him up long-term. I was going to do that anyway. Uh, like, it's not even like Little and um, Daly were that bad for us, even though they're the people I need to replace on the uh, O-line. Seven sacks for Hassan Reddick, six and a half for Derek Brown, uh, five for Matos or uh, YGM, and then interceptions, two for Trey Boston. We might go to a, do we go to a fourth or a three, four? I don't know, but uh, I do want to see potentially if we go to NFC Offensive Rookie of the Year. Okay, um... Kyle Pitts ended up fourth. All right, so the Packers beat the Colts in the Super Bowl. So Matt Polardi, we could look to give a one-year deal too. We actually might have a little bit of cap space for free agency. Matt Paredes, I would like to bring back at least on a one-year deal. Uh, like, yeah, we could target a center in the draft, but I would like to... Okay, of course he leaves us. Right, we'll probably look to bring him back in free agency. Uh, short Perriman, we could also let walk. Joey Sly, I mean, it doesn't hurt just giving him like a three-year deal. And after signing Paredes, like, we should have over $30 million to spend in free agency. So we could look to maybe at a corner, a position of need, or left side of the O-line. So we'll just take a look at who's here. And Devontae Adams and Jair Alexander. I get Alexander a lot, so I'm not going to go after him. Mitchell Schwartz, honestly, he's 33, though. So what, oh, my God, Jesse Bates, though. Oh, my God, imagine I have Jesse Bates and Jeremy Chin as my safeties. That is so enticing. Okay, okay, let me just look to offer Matt Paredes a contract, and then I want to see how much money I have to work with. So Paredes, okay, has no offer. He's good, so we're going to give him a one-year deal to come back. And then we will have around $31 million. Looking at left guard... Lakin Tomlinson honestly would be an upgrade. Clutchy Assembly, left tackle, Orlando Brown is here. I know! <laughs> He's just so enticing. He's a star, 26 year old, or star development, 26 years old, 84 overall left tackle that has zero offers. How can I not offer him deals? How? Uh, so, LDT is here as well. Okay, so let me look at potential corners. Jair, no, I'm not going to go after him because I, I do a lot. So, we could go. It's all like older players. Like, Trey Flowers would be nice. But, like, yeah, I'm targeting 31, 32-year-olds. I mean, it, I guess it doesn't hurt to give A.J. Boye or Jason Verrett or Casey Hayward a two-year deal. So I'm going to give Casey Hayward a one-year deal to come here. And then I think I'm going to go all in on maybe Brown and Bates. I would love to get Jesse Bates just because he's so good. And I don't know why the Bengals wouldn't want to bring him back. So if we offer Jesse Bates that, and then I would maybe move just Trey Boston. Jeez, I've really got to look at the O-line help. So I don't think we're going to have enough to really go after Orlando Brown, but Lakin Tomlinson, we could look to – yeah, we could probably afford him and – like hopefully be able to sign him and then really maybe target like a Logan Brown in the draft or somebody like that. So let's advance the week and let's see if we get anybody and we get Jesse Bates. Let's go. We also get Paredes, Casey Hayward and Lake and Tomlinson. That's let's go. That's what I'm talking about. So we upgrade the secondary getting Bates and getting, uh, Je our, uh, what's his name? Casey Hayward. So I'm probably going to look to move Trey Boston now. All right, so we traded Trey Boston and Brady Breeze to the Browns for a third-round pick. Clears up a little bit of money down the line, but nothing major, obviously, because it's the cap hit. So let's just kind of go to the NFL draft and see who we're going to target. We have the 11th pick in the draft. So let's see who the Jaguars go at. One, they go Derek Stingley, another LSU corner. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau, he goes two out of Oregon. Three is Kyle Hamilton out of Notre Dame. Uh, like, obviously, Derek uh, Stingley would have been amazing for this team or Logan Brown, but he goes five to the Dolphins. Sam Howell goes six to the Bucs. Kanan Slovis going to the football team. The Raiders are going to go Garrett Wilson. Uh, the Pack or the Patriots go Zach Harrison. That's a nice pick. I mean, we could also go D tackle or middle linebacker. Actually, middle linebacker could be nice with Owen Popo still on the board and Nick Broker. Okay, so I was looking at him as well. Uh, DeMarvin Wheel looks good. George Kelf, uh, Carla Ftis. Owen Popo might be the pick though because, yeah, we don't even have a middle linebacker, I think. <laughs> like, yeah, we need a, a tackle. But I think we can always look in the second. Actually, we don't even have a second round pick from the Darnold trade, damn it. All right, but I think we need a middle linebacker and getting Owen Popo out of Auburn. The field general, A minus tackle, A minus pursuit, B plus hit power, 6'1, 230. We lost Denzel Perriman. I didn't really target middle linebacker. 76 overall, hit and development. I'm 
very fine with that pick. Okay, I'm going to try to trade for Jonah Williams as the Bengals have two left tackles with Sewell and Williams. So can I give up three, seven, and my fifth next year for Jonah Williams? And they will, and my game froze, but they accept it. Okay, so we, instead of taking a flyer on a draft pick that maybe or maybe not would have sucked, but probably would have sucked, we get Jonah Williams, which is a great pick. And actually, that was the second of the third picks I think I gave up were the third round picks from the trade Boston trade. So looking at D tackles. Uh, okay, so we don't have any scouted. So I'm going to take a shot in the dark here. Do we look at Jordan Williams? Doesn't have a bad combine. Or do we look at Tyler Davis? I think I like Tyler Davis here. Second round. Uh, or Jaden Kermady. 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 Jaden Kermady. Do we go him or Tyler Davis or Jordan Williams? You know, I'm going to go Tyler Davis. Please be a 70 overall higher. 70. Hit a development. Yes. 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 What a pick. Let's go. All right. So the draft recap, honestly, a great draft because we ended up with Owen Popo, Tyler Davis, who were pretty good for us too. Um, Himmel, man, uh, he wasn't very good. He had a good combine though. So I thought it could be just in shorter. It wasn't much either. Uh, but yeah, we added Jonah Williams as well, which is going to be huge for us next year. So Sam Darnold is going to have a better O-line. He's going to have still some great weapons. And it's playoffs or bust for him next year. And if we, if we don't make the playoffs, he could be gone. So I actually don't remember if Teddy Bridgewater is still on this team or not. And let's see, he is. I probably should have cut him because I probably would have saved a lot of money and therefore I could have went after Orlando Brown. Yeah, I would have freed like 16 mil up. So we'll just wait till the offseason. But we'll have Jonah Williams, Lakin Tomlinson, Matt Paredes, uh, Deontay Brown, Taylor Modden, uh, Kyle Pitts at Superstar Development. We got Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, David Moore, McCaffrey, and Sam Darnold as our um, offense. And then on the defense, we will have Jeremy Chin. Uh, we will have Jesse Bates as our safeties. Oh my God, that's so good. Shaq Thompson, Owen Popo, and Hassan Reddick. We have Brian Burns, uh, Tyler Davis, uh, Derek Brown, who's now down to uh, start development, and Chris Matos is now down to normal. Then we got Drake Jackson, Casey Hayward, and Troy Pride. I'm going to make Aaron Robinson the slot corner just because I drafted him, so I would like to develop him. Specialists, we have Polardi and Joey Sly. Specialists here, we will have um, Aaron Robinson as our slot corner, and I'm going to make sure that we have, what's his name, DJ Moore as our slot receiver. Uh, we are going to go with multiple zone run, most likely. Run and shoot. Honestly, let's try it. Let's try it. Um, and then we'll keep the playbook. I think it'll work. Let's go. We made the playoffs and we won our division. We get the tiebreaker over the Bucks and the Saints. And I also kind of forgot to mention the Bucks getting Sam Howell is so scary. They win the Super Bowl and then they get a next generational quarterback. Or not generational quarterback, but their franchise guy in Sam Howell. But hey, Sam Darnold leads us to a home playoff game. That's all I could have asked for for him this season. So was he 30th in passing yards? Hey, he's 25th now. I'll take it. Hey, only four interceptions. He was sacked 33 times through 25 touchdowns, 3,700 yards. McCaffrey, 1,200 yards on the ground, five touchdowns. Over to receiving DJ Moore, 76 for one over 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns. Kyle Pitts, 69 for 808 and three touchdowns. Anderson, 66 for 724 and six touchdowns. There's David Moore and then McCaffrey. Blocking-wise, you can have the most sacks, Modin and Williams, as expected from tackles. Defensive-wise, Chin and Popo, over 100 tackles apiece. Sacks, seven and a half for Burns, gave him, him and Robbie Anderson contract extensions. No, him and DJ Moore contract extensions. Here were the sacks. And then over to interceptions, you got three. I saw somebody got three. Jeremy Chin, two for Jackson, Popo, Hayward and Robinson, and Jesse Bates got zero, unfortunately. So... Uh, do we have anybody that could be, yeah, did potentially, um, let me go to NFC, defensive rookie of the year, we could see Owen Popo, let's go, we see him there. So, can we beat the Packers, and can Sam Darnold beat potentially Aaron Rodgers, yeah, it could be Jordan Love, but it could be Aaron Rodgers, and we, and oh my god, we get blown it's up very by 39 hard. points. <laughs> okay, you know what, at least we made the playoffs, that's all I can just kind of x4 right like it's a step in the right direction we make it to the first time since newton was still here uh and yeah aaron Rodgers definitely out dueled sam darnold darnold wasn't very good uh mccaffrey 4.8 yards for carry uh kyle pitts got a touchdown but yeah that's pretty much it we had one sack so the browns beat the saints 35 to 24 in the super bowl so another nfc south team going to the super bowl so we can go here to the resounding phase anybody else i would like to bring back casey hayward yeah I think I would bring him back on a one-year deal. We're going to have loads of cap space for free agency. Um, oh, he's testing out. Wait, is Sam Darnold going to be here? Uh, yes. Yeah, so Sam Darnold, let's see. He wants a lot of money. I got to do it. I got to do it. So Sam Darnold, welcome back to being the Carolina Panthers franchise quarterback. And also another reason why um, Jonah Williams kind of went for cheap. He was on an expiring deal. So I'd like to give him a four-year deal. Yeah, we're going to have like no money for free agency <laughs> at all. Uh, I would like to... Mm, I'm not going to tag him. We'll let him walk. Lincoln Tomlinson, I wouldn't mind bringing back. 
Uh, let's see if he accepts that, and he does. And then was there one more person? Yeah, Matt Paredes. I'll just look to resign in free agency. We'll see what the price is, or if there's anybody better there. So we're looking for an interior O line on the left side and the center position. And then we, I gotta bring back a punter. So let me just see who's here. Cream Hunt, Rodney Hudson. I mean, I would like Rodney Hudson. Um, Matthew Ioannidis. Ah, uh, now we do have. I forgot the D-tackle's name. Kyle Fuller, we could use a corner. Uh, like, do we bring back Hayward? And he's in a bidding war, so I'm not going to get in a bidding war. We'll go after inside Kyle Fuller to a one-year deal. Why not? And then let me just see if there's anybody that we need to cut on this team to save some money. And if we go to savings, let's see. Uh, Shaq Thompson, not going to cut him. Tomlinson, no. Ooh, uh, we can cut Jamaine Martin. Just clear up about a million, but hey, that matters a little bit. Any other per players I want to cut? We could cut uh, Bravian Roy. That will uh, free up about 500K. No, it'll free up about um, 900K. So we have a little bit more money to work with here. Basically to go after, uh, let's see, where's, uh, we brought back Lincoln Tomlinson. So it's pretty much, I would like to go after Rodney Hudson. How much is Chase uh, C. Treader going for? I don't really want to get into a bidding war. So like Paredes, we don't need to bring back. Like I could look to bring in like, Mitch Morse, why not? On a one year deal, I will have to lowball him a little bit just because we have no funds. And he might accept that, probably not. But hey, you never know. Let's see if he does accept that. And we get Fuller, which is huge. Definitely upgrade over Hayward. Uh, I would say slight. And we'll see if we can get Mitch Morse. And then for the draft, who are we going to target? I guess O line can help because the interior line still isn't great. We could look to target another receiver. Uh, to get a good third receiver. And yes, we're going to pick up the uh, option on Derek Brown. And another corner like Aaron Robinson, Dante Jackson. And you know, an Aaron Robinson, Jackson, and Fuller is something at least. How much is Mitch Morse? Is he... Okay, we're not getting Mitch Morse. And then when we go to other centers here, uh, Weston Richburg, I guess Paredes is just going to come back on a one-year deal. It's our best option. All right, so let's start the NFL draft. We got Matt Paredes back. And we have the 23rd pick. So let's see who is going to be on the board then. And if it's going to be... Okay, so I did say I could use this, the wide receiver. Carl Stoudemire, cousin of Amari Stoudemire. That is a position we could go after. Definitely. Uh, what else was I going to look at? O-line. Don't have a lot of good scouted O-linemen out there. D-line, nothing great. Good D-tackle, but we don't need one. Ooh, Daquan. Oh my god, this guy looks so good. Could we put him on the D-line? Mm, we could move, I guess, Redick. I don't know, because they like, made us... Or, uh, do I draft him? Look at that combine. I got to draft him. I got to draft him over the Stoudemire guy. And he's not even hitting development. I'm so stupid. But there's some good receivers still on the board. And uh, Trevor Cooper's got a first-round grade. Uh, but so does Nasir Monroe and Darian McFarland. Who do I go after? Who do I go after? And then I'm going to go after Nasir Monroe. He could be our slot guy or just our third receiver. He's normal development, 73 overall. Probably play over David Moore now. I took Randy Everett here in the uh, third round. He's in development, 35th in true value. We took him at 87, even though we don't need another D tackle. All right, I think this could be our year. I am very confident that this team could win a playoff game or potentially multiple playoff games. So on the offensive side of the ball, the O-line is solid. The interior on the left side isn't great, but like we have some great blockers there. We have Kyle Pitts as our tight end, Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore. We have Jeremy or Johnny Shorter. What's his name? Justin Shorter, uh, the rookie receiver. We have McCaffrey and Darnold. Not bad, right? Not bad at all. Defensive side, we have Jesse Bates. Thompson is down to... Okay, he's a right outs. All right, that's not great. He's down to normal. We have Owen Popo, Hassan Reddick. We will have Jeremy Chin there. We will have Kyle Fuller, or is this Kendall Fuller? This is Kyle Fuller. Dante Jackson. I want Aaron Robinson in the slot again. We're going to have Gross Meadows. Uh, we're going to have Derek Brown. We're going to have Tyler Davis. Tyler Davis. And we are going to have Brian Burns as our D line. Special teams, good there. Specialist. Um, we are going to put maybe DJ Moore or even Kyle Pitts as our slot um, receiver. And then I don't want um, Troy Pride as our slot corner because I want that to be Aaron Robinson. So yeah, I think I'm going to make DJ Moore once again the slot receiver. Do I just put Kyle Pitts there and say F it? And see, you know what? Let's put Kyle Pitts there and see what he can put up. I don't know. I'm curious to see. So <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work out. And I'll see you guys at the end of the year. Hopefully the team makes the playoffs once again. Okay, so we ended up making the playoffs here in year three with Sam Darnold. We go 12-4 and four and we win the division. I was hoping we'd end up being the one seed. It's always the Cowboys. It always is the Cowboys. We're taking on a divisional opponent, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who went 8-8 eight and eight in wildcard weekend. Darnold was 32nd in passing yards. <laughs> I don't care, though. We're... Uh, here, because Christian McCaffrey's a freaking stud, 1,600 yards and 14 touchdowns, averages over 100 yards a game. Receiving-wise, Kyle Pitts, 67 for 869 and 8 touchdowns. 
Moore, 58, 7, 26, and 5 touchdowns. Yeah, I got to change that. I, I can't make Kyle Pitts my slot receiver. Jonah Williams gave up 11 sacks. Beautiful. Who got the most sacks? All right, let's go. We get finally, guys, in double digits. YGM with 10 and a half. And then Brian Burns with 14 and a half. Six interceptions for Kyle Fuller. Four for Jesse Bates. Three for Dante Jackson. Let's freaking go. So before I just get into the game against the Bucks, I'm going to go to my slot receiver. And I'm going to make it uh, DJ Moore once again. So, can we beat the Bucks? And Darnold wins his first career playoff game. Can it happen? Let's see. Let's go. Boom! We beat them by a field goal. 24 to 21. So Sam Darnold for, threw for 322, one touchdown, one, one touchdown, one interception. He was sacked twice. Sam Howell, one touchdown, one interception, sacked twice. He threw for 231. Darnold's longest pass was only 24 yards. McCaffrey, 15 carries, 73 yards, two touchdowns. Run it to him more. Don't give it to uh, don't give it to uh, Percy Langford. Give it to Christian McCaffrey. Receiving wise, DJ Moore, seven for 109. Anderson, six for 85 and a touchdown. Pitts, five for 58. Uh, who gave up the sack? Taylor Monin. And then uh, our Mitzone. And then our sacks. One for Jeremy Chin. One for Steven Weathers. And who got the pick? It is Own Popo. All right. So let's upgrade our players before we take on the Seahawks at home in. Actually, I don't even know what the Carolina Panthers Stadium is called. Bank of America Stadium. Come on. BOA. Let's take it. Let's go to the conference championship, please. Boom. We double the score. We win 24 to 12. And we're going to the conference championship to take on the one seeded Dallas Cowboys. Darnold threw for two touchdowns, zero interceptions, only 179 yards. Wilson, 194 and one touchdown. Maybe our secondary is that good. McCaffrey, he's carrying us, man. Why is Percy Langford getting more? I don't know. Uh, Pitt, 7 for 52 and two touchdowns. More for four for 49. And let's see. Did we get any interceptions? No, but Burns, two sacks, one half for Reddick, one for Popo, and half for YGM. But can we beat the Dallas Cowboys? Who knows? 13 3 in ATT Stadium. Boom! We beat them 30 16! Sam Darnold! Yes! Let's freaking go, Sam! That's what I'm talking about! We ended up winning 30 16 and we're going to the Super Bowl. Darnold, pff, less than 200 yards, but he hasn't been throwing picks. Prescott throws two interceptions. Our defense was legit in this game. McCaffrey goes off receiving wise. Uh, Jermaine Nolan, like our third string running back, got the touchdown. We gave up four sacks. Not great. How did we win this game? Two sacks for Derek Brown, one for YGM, one for Burns, and interceptions, one for Shaq Thompson, one for Owen Popo. And we are going to Super Bowl to face the Cincinnati Bengals. This is going to be a good one. Jonah Williams revenge game? Possibly. Potentially. It is. Let's see what happens, though. Let's go to the Super Bowl. We'll hop in, and we'll see. All right, we're taking on the 9-7 and seven Bengals. And can we beat them? Can Sam Darnold get a Super Bowl championship? Let's advance. Please. Please, Darnold. Please. Please. No. We get blown out. Damn. We end up losing. Ugh. What was that? 34 to 10? Sheesh. Darnold. He's not very good. I don't know. <laughs> he wasn't very good for us in this video, but you know what? He brought us through Super Bowl. I'll take it. Let me know. Do you guys think that Sam Darnold could lead the Panthers to the promised land one day? Or do you think this is going to be a big mistake for the Panthers and they should have just traded up to draft a quarterback and traded up to five, especially if Mac Jones gets three and get either Fields or Lance at five with the... Uh, with the Bengals. But yeah, let me know down below what you guys think. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys enjoyed the Sam Darnold rebuild. I love you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.